All right, well, without further ado, please join me for our call to worship. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. You who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the soul of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Amen. Let us sing together a song entitled, Jesus Shall Reign. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Well, our next hymn we haven't uh, sung too often, but it is a, a very beautiful hymn. Uh, Brandon's going to come down to the piano and play it. And it is entitled, Open My Eyes That I May See. Please bow with me for our offertory prayer. Gracious Lord, we humbly come to you today and do again remember all the wonderful blessings you have given to us. We are reminded, O Lord, of your conversation with Nicodemus as you told him that he must be born again. And Lord, let us not forget as the church that we give in order that people may hear thy love and grace and thou must be born again. Help us, O oh Lord, to do our part for your glory. Thankful to everyone that helps. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're blessed today to have Miss uh, Candace here with us and Elizabeth. If you remember, Candace sang beautiful specials at the uh, Easter service, if you were there or on the video. But her and uh, Elizabeth are doing a duet today, and it's entitled, Let There Be Peace.
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Candace, Elizabeth, Brandon. Let's give them another word of praise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that is a hard act to follow, but anyway, we'll do our best. Well, I pray you have your Bibles with you today and invite you to turn with me to the book of Psalms. Our lesson today is Psalms 3. Psalms 3. Today is a little bit different than I normally do in a sense. I'd like to just walk through this psalm with you. Sometimes in life we face very challenging situations. Sometimes we face very hard decisions. Sometimes we make a bad choice. But I pray as we see within that, the answer is, is turning, you know, close to the Lord, as we'll see here from David. So Psalms 3, this psalm is entitled, A Psalm of David When He Fled from Absalom, His Son. Verse 1. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O Lord, may you open our hearts to your word. Speak to us. Help us in life. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, we can all say, I'm sure, in an accordance that we've all had bad days, right? We've all, you know, uh, you know, drive out the wrong way from the driveway or, you know, the train hits you. You've been one minute sooner. You could have made it or a flat tire or even more severe things that we talk about in life. But the reality is we all face challenges uh, in this life and at times face challenges of faith in our attitude to understand of, of faith. We'll see that. Now, what we find here today is a, is a psalm of David that in this day of his life, everything came crashing down. David had built a kingdom. David had had the crowds. If you remember when he was younger, uh, as he was dancing by the ark, they were praising him, praising him, praising him. David had secured a, a kingdom he was one of the most powerful kings of all that area. And he had done a tremendous amount of work. But we also know that David had another side to him, which sin and more sin. And sin is always costly, if you remember. Now, up until the time of Bathsheba, best we're able to tell, David was good with his family. Sons, his daughters, they were growing Life was growing, kingdom was growing, faith was growing. But you remember that it all went down, started going downhill when David decided one day that he wasn't going to go to work. He wasn't going to go to war. Stayed home. Stayed on the couch. And of course, towards evening, he saw Bathsheba. And of course, the sin that he committed with Bathsheba, he had her husband Uriah killed on the front lines, if you remember, murder. We find that David did all he could to cover it up and conspiracies out the gazoo, and he wanted just to push it all the way. But of course, Nathan the prophet came, and thou art the man. So after that, the children began to lose respect for David. Things began to go downhill in the family unit. Sin is always costly. And so thus, all that he thought could be just pushed to the side didn't, because all of a sudden now, his sons and his daughters began to lose respect. They began to lose within their hearts that they were really a family unit. And many things began to take place there that we won't talk about. 
There was a moment in there where David's oldest son uh, went into deep sin. He actually, I just used the word abused, his uh, half-sister. And we'll leave it there. But in his defilement of her, he should have been put to death. But David, as the father and as the king, he did absolutely nothing. He didn't help his daughter. And he took no punishment towards his son. And of course, the Old Testament had already said, the law, that it was worthy of death. The son, oldest son should have been put to death. And Absalom, Absalom began to really disrespect his father. It was bad enough about the Bathsheba and Uriah. It was bad enough about the loss of the child and all kind of other internal affl afflictions. But now his brother had done this to his sister and the father was doing nothing. So Absalom made up his mind, kind of like what we see on, I don't know how many of you like those uh, police shows, you know, uh, cop, uh, detective shows, you know, always watching that. Anyway, he made up his mind to take two years to plan the assassination. So he pretended on the out front that everything was fine. He pretended that everything was good, but the whole time he was planning and planning when he would kill his brother. And finally the moment came and the day came and Absalom killed his brother in revenge for his sister and he took off. Now again, here is David again that, uh, you know, should do something, should have something, should have some sort of conversation, something. But again, David does absolutely nothing. And Absalom disappears and then he finally comes back and for two years, he knocked on David's door and David wouldn't let him in. For two years, he tried to make it right with his father. For two years, he tried to, to build, you know, a bridge again. Two years, you know, to do the right thing again. And David did nothing again. Now, the Bible says that Absalom, um, he, he was, I guess we could say he was a pretty boy. Uh, he was, uh, they referred to him that he was the most handsome uh, man in all of Israel. And, uh, and the Bible uses that there that he did not have a blemish. He did not have a blemish. I got tickled once. I had a, had a pastor preach for me. And uh, I won't say who, an older lady came up to me after the next Sunday. And she said, Pastor, whenever you want to take a vacation and let him come and preach, because it'll be great because he is pleasant to the eyes. <laughs> Absalom was pleasant to the eyes. People loved him. He, best we can tell, he was articulate. He was a born leader. He had all the traits and attributes needed for that. And what happened was people began to desert David. And they began to surround Absalom. And so after the two years that David would not talk to his son, would not do anything, Absalom actually went over to Hebron and declared a military coup against his own father. And that's where we pick up the story today. David and a few, he lost many. Many of the trusted ones that he had built the empire with, they deserted him and went to Absalom. His original army deserted him, went to Absalom. People that he trusted and loved upped and went with Absalom. Some of the priests that he used to worship with and sit under, they deserted him and went to Absalom. Not all, but some deserted him. And what we find is David had to go on the run. He had to leave the palace. He, the Bible says he crossed the river Jordan and hid and thus, that's where he writes this psalm. Because he needs time with God. A lot of us at time in life, maybe we're just going through life, going through life. But all of a sudden, that crisis comes. That very hard part of life comes. That very difficult time period that's arisen. And what we need to do is what, what David did. It's time to get right with God. It's time to get right with God. And that's what he does. So he starts this psalm, and again, bear with me just walking through it. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. 
Many are those who have ri- risen up against me. Well, that's an amen, right? It's a military coup. I mean, they got soldiers and swords and spears and shields and, you know, all kind of military, uh, uh, maybe even chariots and that at the time. The, the, yes, David, you have your enemies are coming against you. And maybe in life at times we've had people, for whatever reason, become our enemy and they rise up against us and it's never nice, you know, that never works well. But anyway, maybe. But not only did he have all these military coup that was coming, that many of those religious leaders that I just spoke about. Do you know what they were telling David? And David uses quotation marks to, to see it. Verse 2 says, many are they who say, and there's what they say, there is no help for him, David, in God. In other words, David was dealing with not only had they kicked him out, not only were they deserted, but then they were going around and saying, God can't help you, David. God cannot help you. And of course, David has to, has to think about this. But that's what the world does to us, knows it not. We'll be trying to get ourselves closer to the Lord, and, but maybe we go out here and somebody that's not of faith or not of the church, and like, ah, oh, forget about the church, forget about the Bible, forget the things about God, you don't need it. It's not going to help you anyway. And that's the message of the world. But thankfully, David did not listen to the message of the world. And prayerfully, we will not either. So he goes on and he has his talk with God, verse 3. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. David gives praise to God. Again, he's on the run. His own son is trying to have him killed and overthrown. But he says to God, God... You're my shield. You've seen that on TV, I know. Maybe you had one yourself, but round, circular thing with the handle on the inside and you hold it up and it blocks the arrows or the spears coming or swords. And David says, God, you're my shield. What? You're my protector. You haven't left me. You haven't deserted me. I'm in pain. I got a lot of pain. But Lord, you're still there. You're my shield. Secondly, he gives all the glory to the Lord. He doesn't say, now again, remember he's a king. Remember he has a kingdom, or he did. So he's on the run. But he doesn't want any of the glory. He was like, Lord, you're my glory. You're my glory. Don't, I am not worried about this worldly stuff and all that I've done and that. That's not any of it. Right now, you are my glory. The focus was completely to the Lord. You. And then I love the third part he said there. And Lord, you will lift up my head. How many of you ever want to just stay in bed all day long? Anybody? Everybody, amen? Just, you know, I don't want to face the world, you know. I don't want to go, you know. Uh, Parents, kids are like, I don't want to go to school, you know. I don't want to do this or that. And sometimes, wait, wait, we don't want to. but, But David says, you know what? Even in my depression, even in my battle, my spiritual battle and physical battle right now. I have hope in you, you will lift my head. What a beautiful picture. So then we find that he turns to prayer. I prayed or I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. Amen. See, when you're in that situation, brothers and sisters, when life is crashing down, where you don't think you can raise your head, you don't think you're going to make it, Turn to the Lord in prayer. Go to God in prayer. Cry unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. And I love, what did David say? Because God will hear our prayers. God will hear our prayers. David cried to the Lord. And just think about it as a father. Lord, I, I failed. I didn't discipline my oldest son. I didn't even ever open the door to Absalom. Can you imagine the guilt? I never even let him come in and try to talk to me. I blocked him out of my life. Can you imagine the weight of such action? And we find that David says, I prayed to you and you heard my prayer. And then I just love the next verse. See, David's gotten it right with God. He's put his trust totally in God. 
And then look what verse 5 says. It says, So I lay down and I slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. How about how many of you want a good night's sleep? Anybody here? I think everybody's raising their hand. Amen, right? When you get it right with the Lord, when you're at peace with the Lord, and I mean real peace, it's hard, but when you have peace with the Lord, you can lay down and sleep. Amen. How many of you want a nap today? Anybody with me on that? Amen, right? A nap is, uh, is in the Bible. You know that, right? A nap is in the Bible. So don't, don't question me on that, Adam. But anyway, that, but rest. But rest at peace with the Lord. No matter what's happening, see? See, a lot of times we think, well, we got to get all this solved, get all this solved, get this done, that taken care of. Then, no, God says, in the midst of the chaos, cry to Him. Pray to Him. And you'll be able to sleep. And then I love the next part. David awoke. And what does the word say? He was sustained. What does that mean? Well, I give it this way. He had his chicken fried steak, his mashed potatoes, his biscuits and gravy, and some apple pie. Amen. He was sustained. He, it wasn't that everything was hunky-dory. It wasn't everything good. But he was full in the Lord. The Lord had given him what he needed. And he was it was sustained. And I just love that verse when we think about it. Amen. I mean, when you eat chicken fried steak, biscuit gravy, mashed potatoes, apple pie. Whoo, I think you're full. Amen. Full. We find then he goes on. Because see, here's always the choice in life. When things come crashing down all around you, either live by fear or live by hope. That's the choice. Either let fear take you over, and that's how you live, and you're afraid of everything, or you have hope and trust God. And so David says it this way, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of the people who have set themselves against me all around. See what he says? I've had my peace with God. I've made my peace with God. I am right with the Lord. I am back in the spirit with the Lord. We're together on this. I am not going to live in fear. Yes, there is an army that is out there ready to get me, ready to kill me, ready to throw and destroy all that I've done. But I'm going to trust the Lord today. I'm going to walk with the Lord today, and I will not fear. And that's what God asks us to do. That's what he asks us to do. We find that finally David has the understanding and says it so clearly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings is upon your people. David went from the I, 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 and God to understanding the bigger, bigger picture. You, 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 you. He understood that, yes, he was in a mess, but God's plan of salvation was bigger and that God's blessing was bigger. And that's what we have to remember. You know, sometimes we really do have to get ourselves out of the picture you know, and see God's picture. You know, sometimes I walk around, Lord, are you sure? Anybody with me? Forgive me. But, you know, I was like, Lord, are you sure? And the Lord's like, yes, I know what I'm doing. This is just trust me. Stay with me. Follow me. And you'll see the end results. And that's what God does. He gives us that, gives us that salvation. And thus David, he put it to rest with the Lord. Now, some good news and bad news. After this prayer, time with God, the Bible said three armies showed up for David. Three different armies with three different generals from different lands showed up to support David. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty much like a miracle to me, right? I mean, one day you're in the woods, you know, living across the Jordan, running for your life. And out of the blue, God has brought three armies with three generals with all the supplies. We're ready. We're ready. Of course, David was still a father. And in all honesty, I can understand. I empathize with him. 
He knew he had to go to war. He knew it was a civil war. He knew it would have to be done. But he asked all three generals to tell all three armies, don't hurt my son. Don't kill my son. Bring him to me. Can you imagine? Here's a father that was finally ready for a conversation with his son. Don't kill him. Bring him to me. Well, the providence of God sometimes is very, uh, you know, astounding at times. And this is what the Bible says that happened. At the war, the battle was, in, was coming to a close. It wasn't going well for Absalom and his, his soldiers. And he, the Bible says he was on a donkey. Now, some of the Bible scholars say that he was on David's donkey, the, the holy donkey. It would have been decorated as a, as a kingly donkey. And somehow, it doesn't say in the Bible, but somehow, as he's going through some brush and some trees and all, that a fork to, of, of a limb of some way caught him just the right way in the neck. And before he could do anything with the donkey, the donkey just kept walking. And the next thing you know, he was just being held by the fork of the tree. Couldn't get out. Couldn't get out. Was stuck there. A soldier came by and remembered the words of David, so he didn't kill him. But Joab, a general, he knew he had to end the civil war, and so he killed him. The message came to David, and David cried out, Oh, my son, oh, my son, oh, my son Absalom. And he went. Today, brothers and sisters, I ask you, turn close to the Lord. Depend upon Him. Trust upon Him. It makes things so much better. One day, many years ago, at one of my churches, I was, had a phone call. I was outside my car, and the phone call basically was, brother, and I'm just going to use the term sister, because uh, I don't want to rule it in. Uh, 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 an elderly woman in our church who was a pillar of the church, was a pillar of the community, a pillar of her family. And the voice on there was like, come, brother, come, come. She suffered a heart attack. She's about to die. Come to the hospital now. And so I did. I jumped in the car. I took off to the hospital. Uh, back in that day, it was a little bit easier to get into the emergency rooms. And, of course, they let me in. And they let me go to the, you know, the little curtain cubicle as a wind. And I, I noticed that as I was walking towards the cubicle and the nurse was leading me, I noticed that I heard a hymn being sung. I was like, oh, I wonder if that's sister, you know? And uh, so anyway, open up the curtain, sure enough. Yes, she had suffered a minor heart attack. She had some serious health issues. But you know, it's a, it means a lot how you approach that kind of situation, right? So there she was with a smile. There she was singing a hymn. There she was, you know, asked me to pray with her. And, you know, in fact, I, I went into the hospital somewhat sort of down and worried. And I walked out with a smile and praising God because I knew she was in the Lord's hands with a great attitude and great faith that God was going to take care of her. And that's what it's about. Amen. And that's how we face those things. Believe me, I've been in the hospital where they curse me, curse God. Curse everybody in their family. Curse whatever else because their hearts are just not right. But I pray that we have a singing heart that no matter what comes our way, we'll walk with him. In Jesus' name, will you bow with me in prayer? Dear Lord, we come to you today and just thank you. Thank you for your walk with us. We're not alone. And I just encourage anyone out there today in the congregation... Maybe they're having some serious issues to deal with. I pray, Father, they will come to you in prayer, get a good night's sleep, and awake with your sustenance. Help us, O oh Lord, in Jesus we do pray. And the children of the Lord prayed together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Where the word of the Lord has been proclaimed, pray the Holy Spirit's moved upon your heart. Today we're singing a beautiful song. You probably know Fanny Crosby. Uh, if not, please remember that when she was young, she went blind. But she never stopped loving the Lord, and she wrote thousands of hymns, they say. Today we're singing one of her most famous, Blessed Assurance. Let us sing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. So good to have you all. Good to see many of you coming back again. We're so glad to have you. If you're able, please stand for our closing benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord bless you all. Amen. What's going on, Adam? You good?